Bottasini was really central to the fortunes of the double bass. A great virtuoso and a composer and a conductor. A complex musician of great capability. He also played a central role in my own development as a musician. And I've played a lot of Bottasini and recorded a lot of Bottasini. I think I've recorded more than 20 pieces of Bottasini and played probably 30 something of them. But some of it remains outstanding for the microphone. And I will get around to recording those. But in any case, you will know that next year, 2021, will be the bicentennial of his birth. And I imagine that there will be celebrations worldwide and deserved ones too. But we are dealing now with Nel Cor Pier Non Misento. There's an opus number, 23. And I use and have used York Edition in the past. But I have to tell you a little something about York Edition because the very first time that this Nel Cor was published was in the early 1920s in a publication by Ricordi and it was edited by Kaimi, double bassist. And in that edition, there's the recapitulation of the theme. That, of course, is not original, and I don't play this recapitulation in my performances or in recording. The question of Urtext is something which York edition was a trailblazer for. This edition of Nelcor dates back to 1974, and Rodney Slatford was the person who made this edition. And, of course, he returned to the original sources to find out what Bottasini really wrote. And I'm happy to recommend York Edition for anybody who wants to play what Bottasini wrote rather than what editors have done along the way. Also, with Bottasini, we have to consider a few things. His music for the double bass falls into two categories. The first category is the music that is purely instrumental. It is, of course, based upon the fundamental concept of bel canto and also virtuosity, because he was, after all, a virtuoso. And the second category of music is that music which was influenced by the opera. And you will know that he was an opera conductor and also a composer of operas, a successful composer of operas. He conducted the premiere of Aida in Cairo, Verdi's conductor of choice. They shared many a wisdom, and he is also reputed to have played his double bass in the interval to entertain the audiences, playing fantasies on themes from opera. And this Nelco, of course, is based on a theme from an opera by Paciello. The opera is La Molinari, and it appears as a duet. But the thematic material has been taken and used in many ways, and also it entered the repertoire for singers. There are many performances of this particular theme, which you can find anywhere and listen to. You can listen to some of the greatest singers interpreting this particular theme. I listened, for example, recently to uh, Pavarotti and some of the great sopranos, Dame Sutherland, amongst others. And it tells one something about the music. And the thing I realize is that it is possible to bark up the wrong tree with this set of variations, because it is easy to use Bottasini's music merely as a vehicle for virtuosic self-expression or to show off. And actually, that's frivolous and superficial, and it undermines the essence of the music. So when you make a decision to play Nelcourt, maybe look a little bit into some of the fundamental theories and also the origin of the music. This particular theme and the song is something quite sad, really. It's about regret, it's about pity, it's about sentiments which are not frivolous. And I might want to just read you the words to this song. In my heart, I no more feel the sparkle of youth. The cause of my torment, O oh love, it is your fault. You tease me, you bite me, you prick me, you pinch me. What is this thing in me? Pity, pity, pity. 
Love is a certain something which makes me despair. I hear you. Yes, I hear you, beautiful flower of youth. The cause of my torment, O oh my soul, it is you. You tease me, you bite me, you prick me, you pinch me. What is this thing, alas? Pity, pity, pity. That face is one which makes me delirious. A flag to every wind, I know this is you. From one to a hundred you're making fun of youth. You tease, you bite, you prick, you pinch. So everyone cries, alas. Pity, pity, pity. That woman is the one burning me. Now, it means, of course, that we have to choose a tempo that is appropriate for the piece. We also have to play recognizing what we are trying to tell the world. We have to have a reliable mental representation of the piece. We have to think vocally rather than just purely instrumentally. We have to invest the theme with the appropriate character, which is a sense of resignation. And everything else that follows from that, the variations, again, should be pause for thought. Over the years, I've come to realize that there are two fundamental theories about variation form. Variation form is quite creative and rather clever. How to disguise or to embellish something quite straightforward and hide it in something seemingly complex. Composers through the ages have risen to this challenge. And Botticini, of course, is no different. Think of all his other sets of variations. The Carnival of Venice, Puritani, Sonnambula. He always saw the possibilities for variation. Now the thing is this. You have the statement of the theme, and the first theory suggests that every variation has to be in exactly the same tempo as the theme, all the way from the beginning to the end. And of course, that does work, or it can work. And then there's the other competing theory, which suggests that each variation has a unique character, and therefore it has a tempo specifically suited to that character. And that, of course, also has a very good practical application, and also one has to therefore make the decision of what kind of variations one is playing and which theory you subscribe to. As a double bass player, I think that I probably have also been guilty of this crime of using Nelco Pionon Misento as a vehicle just for virtuosity, but not necessary to see the musical importance of what he does. So the question that we have to answer first of all is the tempo for the main theme. There's an introduction in the piano in this version of Melkor and then the double bass plays. You also have to be clear what it is you want your pianist to do. What is the character you want your pianist to invest in that introduction and how to prepare for you to play. So. Having recorded the piece once on CD and having performed it many times in concert, I have revisited what I believe about this set of variations. And I'd like to share with you a few of these little things that I've rediscovered, or a few of the wisdoms. I suppose wisdom is an interesting word. It's something that can't be hurried. It arrives when it arrives, but it takes time. I played my first piece of Bottasini when I was 16. And it means that I've been playing Bottasini for over 40 years. Nearly 45 years, 43 years. And I've learned a thing or two during this time. 